how are you feeling at the end of your, your TIFF journey with a little, little assistance this time around? Um, well, I'm happy that I was here. I'm exhausted. I never realized how tiring this is. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I'm really happy. I got to see a lot of films. I got um, to... How many? How many? Oh, my God. You can I brag. Lost... I'm probably around 30 now. It, very. That's good. <laughs> I think... I don't think I... I know I aim for 30. I mm -hmm. rarely get there. So that's... You were... You're like some... some. We're talking like three, four movies a day, I imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And I'm on LA time, so waking up to go see a film <laughs> at night, to be there at 9 a.m., that means in my brain I'm in a movie theater at 6 a.m. So. <laughs> I want to ask you what you've gotten out of it, but let's see what uh, Valerie said first. Give me an example. Like, what kind of access did you get here that you aren't used to getting at a film festival? Uh, invitations to yeah. things um, and people actually answering their emails when I email them. Um, and that means work for you, right? Like you can right. pitch an item. Right, that project. means because saying yes means work and it right. means I can pitch and it means possibly getting funds. The difficulty with that really quickly is most, uh, most outlets have staff writers who they send anyway. So sometimes it's hard to pitch, but it gives people the opportunity to have material to work with. Um, so that's just bare bones, but other things like interviewing celebrities for interviews and stories or being on the red carpet for video coverage. Things like that are don't seem like a lot, probably because people are used to getting that type of access, but for someone like me, it's a huge opportunity to expand. I saw you nodding when she talked about staff writers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, this is a problem I found for a long time, and I actually get I addressed this because there was an editor at a really big entertainment outlet that responded to a tweet about somebody, you know, calling out, well, why are you having your white reporters, white critics writing mm -hmm. about a diversity issue? There's so many of us that can talk about right. it. Hire one of us. And he piped in. And so I re responded. I was like, I've sent emails. I've, you know, whenever there's calls out, I, rep I have great clips. It's not like, you know, I, mm. I, yeah, I have a blog, but I have clips from like Marie Claire and Harper's Bazaar. He replied and he's like, I'll set up a meeting. We're going to be at TIFF. Mm -hmm. We'll meet. I followed up two times and he never replied. And then I read and they have white critics reviewing mm. things like If Bill Street Could Talk, Roma. So what, why do you think they're unwilling to give the Yolandas of the world a chance? Is it just familiarity? Is it just easier? Is it something, you know, I, is it racism? I don't know. Well, I don't want to believe it's racism. I think they're just so used to things being done a certain way. Yeah. Uh, I've pointed out the issue of staffing when you, I've applied for places, yeah. and the number one requirement is you have to have been employed at a major outlet for a certain amount of years. Freelancers don't have that. Like for me, like I was a paralegal before this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have years of being a freelancer. Uh, immediately, nobody looks at the resume because everything's automated usually by now. Yeah. They, if you don't put that you've been at XYZ outlet for five years, mm -hmm. your application does not even go through. So, have you been able to break through here at TIFF with the assistance? Have you been able to make some connections or get a little more work or make some some sales? I've gotten more work because. I, the outlets that I write for didn't have anybody coming. Right. So I reached out to them way ahead of time. I was like, I'm gonna be here. If you need anything, let me know, let me know. But as far as the outlets that really mm -hmm. need changes, mm -hmm. nothing. The outlets you work for, would they have been able to afford to send you? No, they don't, they don't fund freelancers. So without this program, you would I be... would not be here. Right. <laughs> okay. So. Let's talk, well, let's watch. We're going to set up uh, what I gather is one of your, your best experiences at TIFF. I understand the sound is amazing also. Like everything. The surround, Just everything. Everything. <laughs> So what did this mean to you? What, what were your impressions? Everything. 
in Hollywood we're designed a certain way and if you don't meet that you're dismissed and it's usually like the sexy Latina the spicy Latina right. or the sassy best friend and this is like I mean it's important to see a woman uh, an indigenous looking woman not only have you know, a fulfilling life but also be vulnerable and emotional and be seen. I mean, I don't want to give be it human, away. Right? Yeah, be human, be a full woman. There have been white critics who have reviewed this. Uh, I saw something that talked about how she thought that kind of the story of this maid that didn't get enough opportunities, like there was something that she'd seen that before and, you know, she, she wasn't that, you know, she wanted more than that, that it's kind of an old, old tale. So. What do you think people who aren't of this culture might be missing when they watch this film? Well, for one, that opinion alone means she already sees her as in, in her otherness. Hmm. That, oh, it's just the same story. It's like, no, you're not taking into account the fact that, you know, living as a Latina woman, I know what we're stereotyped as. I know what's out there. And I know that this particular story is more than just the maid's story. Yeah. And um, I really wish people could see this and hear from it from more people like me. Like, uh, there's other Latino women here that it, it was so touching to us. And I immediately wanted to call like my grandmother and my mom because it's a statement to all Latin women. Like, I, I always think there's this quote, I believe, I don't know if it was Hitchcock that said it, but I heard it from Guillermo del Toro, who said, <laughs> in order to be universal, you must be specific. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that is exactly what this film is. Let's move on, and uh, we'll watch uh, a little conversation I had with Valerie about uh, Beale Street. Beale Street is unique in that it shows black love in a way that is almost non-existent. Two people in love, Yes, there's a, a tragedy that breaks them apart, but the courting period between the two characters is really what makes the film so extraordinary. Now, I've adored Moonlight, and I liked Beale Street, but I didn't love it. And my issue with it was that, particularly with Stefan's character, I found that he was so heroic and almost perfect in a way that I... I his, his character and his situation lacked complexity, and so that kind of took me out of the picture. There's a lot of Stefan that speaks to the black men that I grew up with. Right. Not that they're perfect, but that there is a sense of heroic, heroism, I don't know if that's a word, there's a sense of heroic duty that they all sort of possess. But we also have to remember with the book Beale Street, the focus was on the black women, not, uh, not so much the men. Sometimes, depending on who you are, you may not have male role models or it may not have been treated in the way you should be treated by a certain someone. And so this is why the character may have been put on a pedestal because we don't do that enough for black men. I saw some nodding going on. Your your thoughts, reaction? I mean, um, I obviously I can't speak to the black experience, but mm -hmm. I know as a person of color, we are taught at a very young age how to behave and yeah. what to do, what to say, to assimilate, to blend in, to mm -hmm. not bring attention to ourselves. And I think that might be what you're seeing in the character that yeah. Fonny was doing. Because he, especially back then, he probably had to hold himself to a certain manner to not bring anything onto himself. So when I go to review Beale Street, I do all the reviews for CBC News Network. Mm -hmm. It's only me. I'm just one person. How do you feel about the fact that it's going to be mainly my take, my point of view on Beale Street? Uh, well, number one, I don't want to ever put anybody out of a job. Mm -hmm. We all, there's room for everybody. I do think that maybe it would take a second rewatch. Yeah. And to really take into account the opinion of, you know, uh, black women, black yeah. men, people of color, and then rewatch it and see yeah. if you can see maybe 
what they're talking no, about. I and I don't mean to put you in an uncomfortable position, but I do see some um, critics who are very strident and say, like, he should not be reviewing that film, or that person should not be reviewing that film because they are not mm -hmm. X. And, and I, that part makes me uncomfortable, okay. right? Like, I don't, I don't, I, I'd like to believe my opinion is mm -hmm. valid, but I also want, of course, more voices. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I understand completely, but I believe it's because of the time we're in. Yeah. Right now, we've, we, we don't have the opportunity. Even yeah. right now, when there's changes that studios are making to get that, mm -hmm. you know, more stories being told from a diverse group of people, the people that are covering it and reviewing it aren't changing. And mm -hmm. you, none of them are giving us a chance. You're going to go back to L.A. Mm -hmm. Hopefully other festivals are going to follow suit, but this isn't kind of the normal situation. No. How, how do you feel about the, the road ahead? I, I'm trying to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, like, I, I'm extremely grateful for being here. Um, I think it's, it was a great first step. But outlets need to start doing their work, too. And uh, I get there's budget constraints and whatever. But uh, I was talking to someone who actually works at a major news outlet. And her consensus was, you know, the executives are still getting bonuses and stuff. Yeah. Why can't we take some of that budget and hire someone to, you know, at least diversify the staff or get different opinions in? I know it can be frustrating and take a while, but it does feel like the the giant steamship that is the industry is slowly, you know, like you mm -hmm. said, there is a the little more traction, a little more shame, and we'll see. Well, this, this mm -hmm. has been lovely. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much.